Welcome to the Voice of Seven Thunders, a production of the Gospel Trumpet Publishing Company. And we are back with another episode, and we have a special series, actually, that we'd like to cover. And so, Brother Addison, why don't you introduce our readers, or our listeners, excuse me, <laughs> to the program today. Yes, sir. So, as promised, we are delivering to you uh, a series on the subject, the very important and very controversial subject, of biblical proofs of modern day apostles. Amen. We have Elder Stephen Hargrave here who's going to help us with this. Um, we realize this is one of the most controversial doctrines that we hold, yes, sir. a doctrine that we're not ashamed of, we love, and we're happy to share with all the world today. So, Brother Steve, you want to help us out? Absolutely. So, today, again, proof of the apostles, or what is an apostle? So, specifically, we're going to deal with, again, what is an apostle? Hebrews chapter number 3. We're going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, unless otherwise noted. And you study along with us as we read Hebrews chapter number three and verse number one. One of you brothers, please read that for us. All righty. I'll take over chapter three, verse one. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. This is read for very obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. It just simply says that Christ Jesus himself is not an apostle, okay. but he is the apostle. Mm -hmm. Now, we realize it says also and high priest of our profession. We want to focus very obviously on the fact of apostles or on the subject of apostles. What mm -hmm. is an apostle? So here in plain language again, Jesus Christ himself is called the apostle of our profession, Christ Jesus. The word apostle, if you look up just the original language, the Strong's is 652, that's the Strong's number, and it is apostolos. That's the best pronunciation somebody from Xenia <laughs> is going to be able to give you, and it simply means a delegate or an ambassador, a commissioner, a messenger, or many people just say this, general, one that is sent or he that is sent. So Christ Jesus is one, the one that is sent to preach the gospel of salvation to the world. Sent from God to preach salvation mm -hmm. to the world. Very good. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, mm -hmm. you know the scripture well, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John 3, 17, it says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, etc. And then it goes on, but that the world through him might be saved. So an apostle, the apostolic function of Jesus Christ, is that God sent him into the world. He's one sent. And he sent that the world through him mm -hmm. might be saved. Through his life, through his teaching, through yes. his doctrine, Good. might be saved. That is the function of our chief. Apostle Very right. good. and high priest of our profession. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go on and continue to John chapter number 20, let's stay in John and go to John 20. This and verse number 21. And as we're going to that, again, it's very important, brethren. Jesus Christ himself is mm -hmm. the apostle, the one sent that through him, all men would be saved. Yes. And the Bible clearly calls him an apostle, the apostle. So John chapter 20, someone read verse 21, please. Then said Jesus to them again, Yes. Peace be unto you. Yes. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I, I you. you. Now this <clears throat> is amazing. Jesus yes, now well, speaking is. to other men That's who tremendous. are apostles. Anyone that knows the Bible believes that there mm -hmm. are apostles, believes in at least the original 12 mm -hmm. apostles. Here Jesus is saying to those apostles, as my father has sent me, I am one sent. Mm -hmm. I am the one sent, the apostle. As my father sent me in my apostolic office, right. in the same manner, mm -hmm. I, as the one that sent the ambassador, am sending you. Mm -hmm. Brother, we were talking about something, Brother Addison, mm -hmm. and you, how, how were you saying that? We were talking about something yesterday. Oh, yeah. So I, you, uh, com Comparing the, the, yes. the comparison between Christ and the apostles. So, you know, I, first of all, I, I love how uh, the writer of Hebrews, when, when he refers to Christ the Apostle, it, it's capital A. Right? Yes, it, it, yes. It's a yes. proper name. The Apostle. The Apostle. That's correct. So when we think of apostles, we think of, we think of James, Peter, John, you know, Andrew and, and the other apostles. And 
And then if, if you maybe ever thought about the verse that says um, that Christ is an apostle, I think maybe people tend to think of it like this. Christ, it's calling Christ an apostle kind of like they were apostles. Yes, sir. And so we, we think of the gift on a certain level. But actually what you're saying, little Steph, is that really Christ is the apostle, the first apostle. That's correct. And they are apostles like him. That's correct. And that forces your understanding to elevate. You, you, you understand now that, okay, their calling is actually much higher. It's, it's th th they're apostles like him. So let me ask you a question too. Mm -hmm. So again, for our viewers here, you know, they're hearing, they're hearing us read the scripture just plainly here. Sure. Um, but so when people say, when we read the verse, you know, as my father sent me, so send I you, I think people tend to think of that, maybe I've even thought of that in time past in a bit of a shallow way, right? Like, mm -hmm. well, God sent Christ, so he sent us. But are you saying that in the same capacity, the same function, the same operation? Mm -hmm. We that might the even Father, say the same pattern. That's same, the question. In same the same pattern, pattern right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if Christ is the apostle, he came on earth three years ministry to show us how mm. to function in the apostolic office. Right. And now he is sending yes. these apostles of the early morning church time in that same pattern. Yes, yes. Maybe capacity is not the best word. We could say pattern or operation, right? So the same operation that the Father sent Christ, he now sends them. So it, I think there's a deeper level of, 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 of grace and gifting that's given there, from what I'm understanding you Bro say. Brother, I'm, that's exactly what I'm saying. You're saying it very well. It is the exact same operation. That's tremendous. The difference, the difference, and I would say the only difference is that the apostles whom mm -hmm. the apostle chose yes. are not God himself. That's right. They are not the second person They are of the not the that's second right. person Absolutely. of the Trinity, mm -hmm. and that's very clear. Mm -hmm. But in all other areas, in function and gifting, he has bestowed unto them mm -hmm. the apostolic function that is first his, mm -hmm. and there's no difference in that function. Mm -hmm. He's the apostle bestowing that same gifting as mm -hmm. the father sent him, so sends he the others. So as the father sent apostolos, as he sent Christ yes. to bring salvation to the world, so Christ sends these men to bring salvation to the world. To bring salvation to the world, and that is a good kind of segue, segue. Into, our next, mm -hmm. yeah. into our next scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter good. 5, and while you're turning there, 5 and 17 says, therefore if any man be in Christ, the reason I'm saying this so fast is because if anyone's read the Bible, they love yes, this scripture, they know absolutely. it. Therefore if any man be in Christ, or in the apostle, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, behold, all things are become new, and one of you, brethren, please read verse 18. Sure. And all things are of God. Yes. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. Yes. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Excellent. I'm sorry, I have to say, I have to make a little comment here. It needs very little commentary, but I need to say something because we want to highlight this for the people. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself. God reconciled us to himself. Amen. By Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to be reconciled to God, by Jesus Christ. That's right. Who is the apostle. And hath given unto us, the us here is the apostles, the early morning or the primitive Christian apostles, given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. So this highlights again what we were just talking about. The same ministry of reconciliation that the apostle Jesus Christ had was now bequeathed or mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. to the Good earthly word. apostles of primitive Christianity. Yes. And now they were the means of reconciling the, reconciling the people to God. All right. Yes. Verse, 19. Verse 19. Excellent. To wit... Yes. That God was in Christ, yes. reconciling the world unto himself. So here we have God the Father in Christ, reconciling the world in to Christ himself. to himself. God the Deep, Father. Go Deep. ahead, brother. Not Deep. imputing their trespasses unto them. So this reconciliation by God in Christ back to himself is a reconciliation that does not impute the trespasses to the people through the removal of their sins. And hath committed unto us. And God hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. This again highlights the very thing that we were saying. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. The word of reconciliation that Jesus Christ, the apostle, preached mm -hmm. was actually that very same word mm -hmm. in the very same office that mm -hmm. was delivered unto his early morning beautiful, or beautiful. primitive mm -hmm. apostles, primitive Christian mm -hmm. apostles. So, so the mission of Jesus Christ in the earth yes. 
is the ministry of reconciliation. That's the that's the purpose Christ came. That's what an apostle does. To have an earthly ministry to reconcile the world. And Paul plainly says here that he's given us that ministry. That's right, brother. It's that's tremendous. Beautiful. Very clear. Verse 20, can we read that? Please. All right. Now, excuse me. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We, the apostles, not the apostle, but the apostles whom the apostle Christ Jesus yes. chose. We are ambassadors for Christ. For Christ. As though God did beseech this is you tremendous. by us. As though God besought you. By us. Not by Jesus Christ okay. himself. Right. But by those who Jesus Christ the apostle himself. His ambassadors. A yes. Amen. We pray you in Christ's stead. Tremendous. Be ye reconciled to God. An apostle's duty. This is a beautiful duty, text of scripture. Brother, an apostle's duty. Is this saying, brother, that an apostle's duty is to stand in the place mm. of mm. Jesus Christ. Christ stead. And, about to fend somebody, and brother, speak. <laughs> brother, <laughs> no. we, we just, it's 2 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 5. The Verse Bible's 20. About to. <laughs> As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Instead of Jesus Christ himself doing it, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ sent mm -hmm. Others that were sent as he was, mm -hmm. that they would operate in that function and perform That's exactly mm -hmm. what he did in terms of reconciling the people. And brother, this, this completely is corroborated by the history of the Christian church. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, he ministered for a short period That's good. of time, That's good. but the duration of Christianity and the great march of Christianity has continued on into um, throughout history, and the way it did that was it had the morning the, the primitive church had apostles who had the mind and the spirit of Christ who stood in his stead or in his mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. as ambassadors to the world. And mm -hmm. the authority that mm -hmm. gave them the ability to do that is that Jesus Christ himself said, S I, so send I you. the sent one, right. yes. am sending you. Right. And that is a good segue into our next scripture. All right. Matthew chapter 10. All right. Yes. <laughs> Matthew chapter number 10. Mm -hmm. One of you brethren, please read verse 40. Brother Matthew 10 and 40. Brother Ernest, one of you brothers, read it. Well, if I can get there. Yeah. Fast enough here. <laughs> 10 and 40. And I'd like to read all through this, but we're just delivering to the people what is an apostle, giving them some understanding of what exactly the Bible says an apostle is and does. Here we go. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Mm -hmm. So when the apostles whom the apostle Christ Jesus chose, when they were received, Jesus Christ himself was received mm -hmm. because he was the one that sent them. Mm -hmm. So to receive Jesus Christ, can we say that this verse means to receive Jesus Christ means that one must receive those yes, sir. who he sent. That's exactly That's what right. that says. And if you receive those who he sent, you receive him. And if you receive him, Jesus Christ himself, then you receive the one who sent him, mm -hmm. which is God the Father. So I know we're in our time. Can I ask another question? Please. So he, he says here that if you receive me, if they receive you, they receive me. And I think yes. other place he says something like, if they reject you, yes. they reject me. So are you saying that if someone were to intentionally, willingly, reject the administration or the preaching or the gospel of Peter mm -hmm. that they would in effect reject Jesus Christ himself. Now let me ask let me answer your okay. question by asking you a question. Could someone disagree or reject the ministry of Jesus Christ himself and be saved, being clear with God? They couldn't have the Father if they rejected Jesus, Well, they right? couldn't have the Father if they rejected Jesus. That's right. right. So, answer, to answer your question, not only could they not have the Father if they didn't have Jesus, but they couldn't have Jesus if they, if they didn't, didn't have, have the Apostles. Very the good. apostles. And again, history corroborates this. The morning time church, the primitive church, lived and believed the Apostles' doctrine, which is an Amen. amazing mm -hmm. statement. Amen. Jesus having vouchsafed his very doctrine to men, Mm -hmm. in whom was the Spirit of God, in Amen. whom were gifts of God mm -hmm. that were able to transmit the gospel. So let's do a very quick review here. Amen. Okay. All right, so what we're saying in this particular presentation today is that an apostle, excuse me, let me start off. Jesus Christ is yes. the apostle. Yes. He's the pattern apostle. He's the prototypical apostle. That that apostle, Jesus Christ, gave or, or, or gifted men right. with the very same gift that came from himself. They were then called apostles, mm -hmm. given the same work of an, of an ambassador mm -hmm. to the world such that 
the world's access to Jesus Christ was to come through the labors in life and working and gifting of the apostles. Brother, the earth. brother, that's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. The one difference being this, that as apostles, they are not God. Right. Amen. Absolutely not Jesus Amen. Christ, the second person that's of the right. Trinity. Amen. You've been listening to another episode of the Voice of Seven Thunders, a production of the Gospel Trumpet Publishing Company. Please take a moment to subscribe at the bottom of the screen. And for more content by the Church of God, you can find that on our website at www.churchofgod.com. Thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you.